Okay, let's come back to the if statement. So let's take this just a tad bit further. And I'm going to be using the same example with our fruit here. Now let's say um, if uh, apples is less than oranges, we will output more oranges okay now we're gonna learn something else here so we already know that this will be false okay because right now three well this will be true I'm sorry three will be less than five here in this particular case here but let's say it's reversed here let's say five is less than three. Let's say this is false, okay? Because it is right now. It's now false. This will not execute this this um, bracket of code in here. <clears throat> so we're going to learn another add-on here. This add-on will be an else. Well, this is our first add-on. We didn't learn any. So the else goes on with the if here. So if this is false here, the uh, program will execute the elf, the code inside the else statement, the else statement here. So we would output um, not more oranges, or just something. So when we run this here. When it comes across this if statement here, it's either going to execute one piece, it's going to either execute one if statement, or it's going to execute the other if statement. So it's either going to be one or the other. Not more oranges. In this case, it ex executes the uh, else statement because this piece here was false here. So if this is not true, it'll execute the else statement. So no matter what, something will be executed. It'll either be this or this, as long as we're using the else statement the else statement. Now in the other example when we just use two if statements, sometimes neither could be executed, sometimes both could be executed. In this case if I set um set them both equal to each other and run it, it'll say not more oranges. Because first of all, three does not equal three, so it automatically goes to the else. And it says not more oranges. And that's it. So that's the else statement. So we can only use the else after immediately after the if here. So if I put if I got rid of this if here, it will not execute the else will be confused. Because it needs an if to go along from that else else here. So if I have something in between here, let's say I output it um Hello World, the else is gonna have a problem here because it has to come immediately after the if statement here. Now this brace is here is part of the if statement here. Along with this else here is connected to this if here. Now just to keep in mind here, if I got rid of this here, and this is legal here, the if's only going to point to one single program statement here. And I'm going to, and I still promise to tell you why later on here. Now we can put. You know, we can put all kinds of things in here. So one piece will be executed or the other will be executed. And it's a, you know, that's just a little bit more power we can have here. So we can have several different things in here. Let's try a different example other than apples and oranges here. Let's say we use a char character. We haven't used char variables too much yet. So let's say we make a char, and let's call it um, choice. Okay. Now what I'm going to say is I'm going to say C out. Would you like an apple? Let's say it equals zero here. And 
and um, then we're going to out input a value for choice. So what this does is we can type in a character for choice. Now what we can say, we can say if choice is equal to a character y here, we'll say we'll say something like here you go. And then we'll we'll say apples is equal to one. And now else we'll just say okay. And that's just gonna be our code here. So it's a little it's still a little uh remember I gotta use this here. Because we've got to use system pause anytime we're using the CIN statement. Because the CIN.get won't work once we call it the CIN for a variable here. So let's let's see what what happens here. Now let's output um just one more thing here. Alright, now let's run it here. Then we'll trace it after we run it here. Would you like to buy an apple here? So let's say I type in Y. It says, here you go, and then apples is equal to 1. Mm, still annoying. Now, what if I entered something else other than apples? Let's say I entered N for no. It'll say, okay, and I have zero apples here. Well, it's a, it's, it's a kind of a, a fishy program here. It's kind of... Well, it's kind of silly, but vari variables can change depending on what the user types in. So if it's only going to check, so when we run this here, from the top here, the, the uh, program is going to read this line here, and it's going to read this line here. It knows that I declared two variables. Then it prints this to the screen here. <clears throat> After it prints this to the screen here, the program has to stop and wait for me to enter a character here. So let's say I enter something else other than Y. So I entered like T. After that, it's going to see it does T equal Y. That's a false statement. So we skip right to the else. Then we go, OK. We just output OK. We end the line. We end another line and say apples is 0. We just output the apples. And then we end the other line and then um, the program will run the system pause piece. If we run this again, let's say we hit Y this time. Well, same variables here. We read our two variables from these two lines here. The third line, we print this to the console. Now, our program, when we get that far, is paused here on this fourth line here, which is waiting for us to enter a value here. So if we enter Y, is this true here? This is a true statement. Y does equal Y. So we output, here you go. And then we set apples equal to 1. Okay. Now we skip this else statement because we already executed the true statement here. So keep in mind, when we use the if else statement here, this the program's going to either execute this piece here or this piece here if the compiler runs across it. And that's just the uh, introduction to the FL statement. So we can have we can have more choices. We can use more variables. We can use character variables. And it's still this is still a boolean. You know, this is just a boolean statement here. It's going to see if something's true or false. And certain things happen if the program's true, or if the boolean's true or false. And we didn't even make a variable called boolean here, but we're going to be using boolean statements, true or false statements, depending on the situation here. So, that said, we're going to, we're going to probably going to be using the, we will be using the if else statement throughout the rest of our programming career. It's an essential part of programming. Every single language is going to have an if statement in it. So,
it's moving on. Hopefully we can, uh, I don't know, let's see what we go over next here.